So, here at the Star Wars Zone London Film and Comic Con, uh, brought to you by Fanta Tracks, and I'm sitting here with Corey D. Williams. Please give him a big round of applause. How's it going? Oh, let's just make sure your mic's on. There you go. You think I would know how to work a microphone, right? <laughs> uh, being a musician and all, but yeah, it's going great. Good. We were just saying before we came on stage that you, I'm sure you couldn't have been expecting all the, the muggy, hot weather that we've had over here at the moment. Well, I brought it with me from Atlanta, especially <laughs> for you. Thank you so. very much. <laughs> Take it back with you when you go home. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> so, uh, we may or may not touch on a small film that came out 36 years ago called Return of the Jedi. I uh, think, yeah. In fact, I think we might just talk yeah, about that. that little film. Yeah. That, that cine film that came obscure out. Obscure film. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, because we've got half an hour, so we're going to pack oh, in as oh much boy. as we can you in half an hour. for a treat. So get comfortable. <laughs> I never shut up, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. How did, and it may seem like a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How did that role come to you? Oh, boy, where do I start? <laughs> well, um... My father asked me if I wanted to do stand-in work for him, which when you're a stand-in, you, uh, basically you help the camera crew set up shots for the actor yeah. um, so the actor can be uh, working on his lines or doing whatever, studying or relaxing in a cool trailer while you're in 110-degree heat. But, yeah. um, so they asked me if I wanted to come and uh, work as a stand-in for him, and uh, I reluctantly said yes because I knew it was going to be difficult. You yeah. know, it's a... Uh, 110 degree weather out there in Yuma, Arizona for a couple of weeks and uh, so I knew it would be a grueling shoot but um, I was working on an album at the time yeah. uh, with my friend Steven Costantino and uh, we were trying to finish up tracks for our album that we were trying to get a record deal because um, we had a couple of record companies interested in what we were doing yeah. and so I was really busy doing that and it was like, uh, you know, I'm a musician so that was like my priority at the time and um, so I really didn't want to leave that behind yeah. and um my father said well you can bring steven with you and you guys can continue working on music at night when you're not on the set and i said all right sounds good so yeah i went there to work as a stand-in for him and which led to other things but so so obviously your dad had already done empire obviously so mm -hmm. what was your what was your your feeling of what the film set would be like, knowing, that, knowing the stories he told you from working on that film, what were your expectations when you came to Jeddah? Apart from the heat, obviously it's going to be hot. Right. <laughs> well, I really didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. I, you know, um, I, really, I really enjoyed seeing him in Empire Strikes Back. Um, so I really didn't, I, I had no idea. You know, it was a total surprise when we got out there and first time I saw that, that set, it was in the middle of the desert. And they had to basically pack down, they had to compact sand to make a road out to it because it was off of the main road. So a lot of people, they were trying to hide it um, by giving us T-shirts that said Blue Harvest on it. And, uh, you know, and I thought that was pretty funny because when we got there, I was like, I thought we would come here to do a Star Wars film. Why are we wearing Blue Harvest T-shirts, you know? And they were like, well, nobody's supposed to know. And I said, well... The first time we all go out to dinner with Karis, uh, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, and my father, everybody's going to figure it out pretty quickly. And, and they did. But, um, so it was out in the middle of the desert, and I, I didn't know what to expect. We drove out, and I saw this huge set. It's before all of the CG stuff that they do now. It was an actual uh, set that probably wouldn't even fit. You know, it was maybe two, two or three stories high. It probably wouldn't even fit in here. It was, uh, they parked semi-trucks underneath it. So it's kind of, you know, I was kind of awestruck when I first came out and they had a uh, fence around the perimeter of it. And I was just like, wow, this is, this is major, you know. Because you look back at the making of videos and it really looked like the circus had come to town in the sense that all the, all the crew were out there building. Yeah. It was just, everyone's in the yeah. heat. I think we basically took over Yuma, Arizona for two weeks. I mean, there was, there's nothing, there was nothing in Yuma, Arizona at that time, so... <laughs> So did he basically set up camp? You guys, all of you were out there near the set, like a small village almost, whilst you were working on it? Uh, no, actually, we, were, we stayed in motels that were in town, and we drove, uh, I, don't, I think it was probably maybe an hour or so to the set every day. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times, because we were so far out in the middle of nowhere, when it got 
uh, when they had they had frequent sandstorms and so they would not allow us to go back to the hotel. We just had to probably kind of sit out there and sit it out most of the time because it was just too far to go back. But so how soon was it? Because there was stories of like people on dune buggies sort of trying to find out where you guys were in in the desert. How long was it that like you say everyone went for dinner? How long was it before people started to cotton on that? Pretty, pretty quickly, yeah. <laughs> within days. I mean, they had a, uh, there was a marine base I think or an air force base nearby in Arizona, and um, they flew over the set in jets when in formation. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, the word's out now. Yeah. Because you could tell something funny was going on out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you originally went out there to do the standing work with your dad, right? So how did that? How did that work? Were you doing that as well as doing the other roles that you did in the film? Well, um, I was doing this. I was first and foremost there to do the standing work, and then um, it turned into stunt doubling. Which there's three three of us doing the stunt in the scene where he goes over the side in the Sarlacc pit, and he's hanging, and then he drops down. Well, the part where he goes over the side is his stunt guy, who Julius LaFleur, um, who's a really good friend, fr- a friend of ours now. But um, Julius LaFleur saw me coming onto the set with my father, and he would tell the story that he thought he was going to get sent home because I looked so much like my dad. He was like going, oh, no, he, Billy brought his own stunt double. I, I'm, I'm toast, you know. But I was not a stunt guy. I was a, I was a martial artist, and I'm a fitness instructor. And so I was in really good condition at the time. And um, they asked me if I would do part of the stunt. But really what happened was my father, um, they had a tentacle that came up and grabbed his ankle yeah. in one of the scenes. And then uh, Han Solo shoots it. Well, there was an explosive charge that went off in the tentacle, and it ended up burning his foot. Um, so he was in a little bit of pain, and they were like, I don't think we want to hang Billy over the side of this this really uncomfortable harness that they put on you. And um, they asked me if I would do it, and I said, sure. You know, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but um, I didn't know about the explosions that were going to go off. But, um, and they were pretty loud, and you could feel the heat. And I looked up, and I saw Chewbacca's double smoldering, and I'm going... Well, if we get through this without catching on fire, we'll be okay, I guess, you know. Um, but, yeah, they, so it, it was three of us doing, uh, doing that. My father was down in the pit. The original stunt guy went over the side, and then as he's hanging there, it was me dressed as him. So wow. that, that was, uh, I went from stand-in to stunt double, and then Clatoo just kind of came out of nowhere. They didn't. Well, I was going to say, how did that, that element come into it? Well, there, there were so many injuries on, this, on that set. Daily, there were probably injuries because there was so much action going on. And um, so they were kind of running short on bodies. They didn't have any, enough people to do all these stunts at one time. And um, they were like, uh, Corey, would you, would you, since you did the other thing, would you mind putting on this really uncomfortable head? No, they didn't tell me how uncomfortable it was going to be, but... Um, it was like being suffocated, pretty much. I mean, you just velcros up the back. They put it on you, yeah. and they close it up, and you and you have to try not to think about it too much. But <laughs> and I couldn't see anything. Um, but I don't even think the creature had a name at that point. He was probably number five seven six dash two yeah. whatever. I think he got named. He became named when they made a toy out of yeah. it. But. Uh, but, yeah, they were just like, okay, so we want you to fight Luke Skywalker in this scene. We want you to run towards him. And I'm like, well, yeah, okay, no problem. Where is he? Because I couldn't see anything. I'm like, you know, you got about this much vision. You got these little eyes. It's really difficult, you know, to see where you're going. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. And how many, t- I mean, silly question, how many takes would something like that? Because t- Anthony Daniels always used to say about f- looking for your marks, knowing where you're going. Yeah. You've got to plot it all out. Yeah. And you're in a live action scenario mm-hmm. with, a, with a mask that's like completely covering everything yeah. so how many times did it take you to get to the place you needed to be I, I, I don't quite remember but I know we were out there doing it for a while and you have to, they have to do it from different angles yeah. so you're doing it over and over again but and then at one point they had a uh, they would use a hair dryer that they would set on cool and they would blow it into the mouth of yeah. the creature so that you could get air 
And then they'd say, okay, we're ready to go again, you know. So they didn't want to have to take the whole thing off and start over. It'd take too long. Because your friend Stephen, he mentioned, he was a Gamorrean guard, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a Gamorrean guard. And um, so he, his, his costume was so heavy that we had to help him stand up in it. It was probably, I don't know, it must have weighed 180 pounds or something. It was a lot of latex to have on in that kind of heat. But and that was a last-minute thing as well. I mean, they just asked him if he would do it. Like I said, they were short. He needed a few extra bodies, and and he said, "Sure, you know, we we were just thrilled to do anything. We didn't, you know, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, but we we did it anyway." Just as an aside, <laughs> then, did, because you say you were deep in work on on your music mm-hmm. with the record deal and everything, right? And then you go off for this amazing adventure. Did that give you inspiration when you came back to work, picking up the work on the music? Um, well, yeah, I mean, inspiration was everywhere down there, but. Um, I don't know that it had a direct influence on the music that we were doing at that time, but we sure had a, you know, we had a blast playing in the, in the hotel room at night and different cast members and crew members would come and listen to us, sit and listen to us play. Um, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so how long were you actually out there for? Because, I mean, I think at the time it was the biggest, the, 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 the style bodge was not the biggest set, external set, standalone set built at the time. So, so it was obviously phenomenally impressive. But how long were you out there for? I think it was approximately two weeks, ish. You know, I I'm, I know they were out there for a long time building the set before, and then they just brought us out to do what we needed to do. And um, yeah. but I saw so many amazing things. Like they were working on the speeders for the for the uh, uh, for some of the other scenes. And yeah. um, you know, it's amazing they make a lot of that stuff out of junk and old car parts and stuff. It looks like it would work, you know, but it's really just junk basically. And they paint it. And make it look like something authentic or real. That's a good point. You remind me of a photograph <laughs> I saw. You say about the speeder bikes. There was, there was a shot when all the speeder bikes are lined up underneath yeah, the other side of the bar. I got to they? see the speeder bikes, yeah. Wow. I didn't actually get on one, but, <laughs> but I did get to see them and how they were made. That would and have been you, a good photo op, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would have been great, yeah. yeah. So when the film came out, what were your expectations? Because obviously Star Wars' biggest film ever, Empire, great sequel ever, Jedi comes out, and it was the, the big finale. What were your feelings on the film when it came out? I was super excited about it, you know, of course. But not only just being in it and being able to be a part of it, but um, I, just, you know, I was a big Star Wars geek to begin with before all that stuff even happened. I was a huge fan of Star Wars movies. I mean, I knew a lot of the lines... I knew I had to recite a lot of the lines, yeah. and you know, my father get my father always gets me to do Orlando Calrissian imitations when we do Q and As together. It's funny, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, so it was it was a super really exciting thing. We went to see the screening of it, yeah, and uh, I was like, wow, you know, it's, so you say you were you never fan- know how it's going to come together when no. you're doing it. No. You know, you're just seeing little bits and pieces of everything. You don't really know what what it's going to look like once they put everything together, cut it all together, and it's. It was, uh, yeah. you know, nothing like what you thought. Yeah. Well, there's a question. Then uh, your expectation compared to the reality when ILM get do their book, you got the John Williams music playing behind it, and everything's polished and finished. Did it in any way match up to what you thought it might be? Uh, I think it pretty much exceeded everything I thought it might be. I mean, <laughs> because when you're working behind the scenes and you're seeing all the little details and things that you guys don't really get to see. You go and you see a finished movie, but you don't see the imperfections, I would say. Um, and I got to see all the imperfections. And then when it comes together, it looks amazing, you know, on screen and very real. Yeah. 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 You mentioned you were a Star Wars fan before you even got onto the set of Jedi. Were you a fan before your dad was involved? Were you a fan when the original oh, came out? Yeah, Definitely. Definitely. I, I couldn't believe it when he told me he was going to be in a Star Wars movie. I was like, what? Get out of here. You're not, you're not going to be. Why would they put you in a Star Wars movie? You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know he's a, he's a, my dad is an amazing actor. I mean, he's, he's a trained actor. I mean, uh, we grew up in New York City. He was doing uh, plays on Broadway, off and on Broadway. And he'd done a lot of television and a lot of different roles up until that point. Um, so I, you know, I knew that he was a tremendous actor, but I just couldn't believe they were going to put him in a Star Wars movie. I was like, "What Star Wars? What?" And then uh, I think he he was he was so excited about it, you know, when it happened. So, what was it about Star Wars initially that grabbed you? Then what what connected with you in terms of 
making you a fan before, like you say, before your dad was ever involved? Well, well, I've always been like a huge sci-fi fan anyway. So like, you know, I was like, I watched every episode of Star Trek when I was a kid on television. Yeah. And so I've, I always loved the genre to begin with. And um, of course, it was like probably like nothing else anybody had seen at that point. And uh, yeah, so I watched it over and over again, you know, all the time. So what was it like then as a young man when your dad turns up as Lando Calrissian in Empire Strikes Back? And, and, and back in the day, he almost got painted as the bad guy, which of course he wasn't. He was caught in an impossible position. But yeah. and, and I interviewed your dad <laughs> years ago and he said, you know, he'd go to the, you know, pick your kids up from school. And, right. You know, and all the other people at the, at the <laughs> school gate were giving him a hard time, you know. Right. How was that for you as a young man then? Well, um, you know, Lando Calrissian was in a, was in a, in a difficult position, yeah. you know. Um, you don't really say no to Lord Vader. I mean, you know, <laughs> you just do it. I, I always say he's the only character that ever raised his voice at Lord Vader and made it to, to the next scene in the movie. I mean, uh, he, he didn't die. Um, you know, it wasn't a condition of our agreement, nor was given Han to that bounty hunter. He was like, you know, you feel you're being treated unfairly. He was like, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, he was, he was a... A gutsy character, yeah. and he was he was put in a position where he had to deal with a lot of uh, complicated things. But people just sort of stamped him as, "Oh, you betrayed Han Solo," you know. I, mean, I don't think he really wanted to do it, but he really didn't have much of a choice. No. You know? Yeah. And so you, as a fan of the genre, watching that, obviously you're watching your dad on screen, so there's that extra level. But right. As a, as a fan of sci-fi and, and that those kind of uh, stories, what did you think of Lando then as a character? Just curious. Well, you know, there's so much of my father in that character, um, which is really what kind of makes it kind of cool, but, and which is why I really couldn't see anybody else playing Lando Calrissian, but um, Glover did his thing with it. You know, they did their own thing. I think their, 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 their rendition of the characters yeah. was a... I look at it as a separate thing, but because yeah. um, it's hard to kind of, you know, nobody wants... I wouldn't want to get into my dad's shoes or... Or Harrison's shoes, you no, know. <laughs> but um, what did you think of that? Just curious now. What did you think of that film with Solo? I, I enjoyed it. You know, it, I was entertained by it. I, nothing is ever going to be as special as the first three films for me. I don't care how many Star Wars movies come out. I'll go and I'll enjoy them and I'll watch them and um, I'll be entertained by them because yeah. you know it's exciting to see new movies. But the 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 first three movies were just you know yeah they're were they're just epic ama- they're yeah. just amazing they're, yeah. they're they're just iconic yeah they'll always be that way yeah, yeah. and so Lando Calrissian is really you know he holds a special place for me yeah in the in the whole Star Wars universe because so much of my father's personality is in that role and um, you know when you really know who he is and know how he is you can can see all that stuff most people can't see it because yeah. they don't really know him yeah but yeah we kind of grew up together so <laughs> but but yeah so of course back in 1983 when jedi came out there wasn't an internet or officially uh now there is could you have imagined then all those years ago that you'd be sitting in london all these years later still talking about your part in that film i could not have imagined in a million years that i'd be sitting here talking to you guys but you know it was it was um you know, something I discussed with my friends, and they, oh, that's kind of cool. You're in a Star Wars movie, but um, the whole thing kind of began. My father's been doing conventions for twenty some odd years, but um, and he would tell me about, man, you got to go with me. To, I was like, yeah, okay. And uh, but I, you know, I'm, I've been a fitness trainer for twenty eight years, uh, as well as a musician. But and the musicians have to do something to make money usually, <laughs> unless you're super famous. But um, so, uh, you know, I became a fitness trainer. Um, in 91, I started my business. So in my training studio that I train my clients in, there's a photo of me and Steven. And the, uh, the Klaatu mask is down in front of me. And you can see it's me. And um, our, my dad's convention manager, Derek Mackey, who's Cool Waters, he's, he's, that's the reason why I'm here, because of him. But he's like a brother to me. But um, he saw the photo and he said, that's a cool photo. Do you know how many people would want to have that photo signed? And I was like, what, like three? My mother already has a copy, you know. <laughs> and he was like, well, let's put it this way. You know, you, you probably need to think about doing conventions. And I was like, no. 
what happens if I get in front of a panel of people like you and they ask me questions that I don't know the answers yeah. to because most people already know more about it than I do. It's like, oh, I don't think that's going to happen. So he convinced me, you know, to, to start coming out. He, he, and he said, well, I think that character has a name and I think he's an action figure. And I'm like, you're kidding, you know, are you kidding me? And um, he found out his name was Clad too, and indeed there was an action figure, and people have been collecting me yeah. for 30 years, <laughs> and I had no idea. I said, man, I could have used that, you know. So they never don't you know I'm an action figure? They would have told my mom that. She would have said, I don't care what you are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you never knew you had a figure. Yeah, right, right. I could have used it as leverage or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was crazy. I didn't even know for all those years that I, that I had... Wow. The character was an action figure. I had yeah. no, I had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you enjoy? I mean, obviously, it sounds like it was an amazing experience. So, you're more than happy to talk about it. Do you do you do, do you enjoy getting out there now and going to conventions and, and relaying that? Because it's it's a, it's a vibe as much as anything, isn't it? It's a, it's a it's a time capsule of your involvement in Star Wars. Do you enjoy telling people about that? I do. I mean, it's it's a special thing, and it's it's part it's a part of my family legacy. Yeah. You know, um, and so, you know, you, if you, you can't help but embrace something like that, and it's positive. Um, you know, I, I've seen how it spans so many different generations of children. I mean, people's kids, kids, their kids, the grandkids. You know, I, I had no clue, you know, how big it was no. and how big it has become. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a real special thing to be a part of. You know, I feel, I feel like it's a privilege to be a part of it and I'm you know I'm really pretty much happy to share it with yeah. people you know I don't, as you can see right I mean I'm the, it's uh it's it's a, it's a wonderful thing I enjoy it yeah. you mentioned you mentioned your music your dad obviously with his art where does that artistic streak come in in the pair of you where did that come from um well basically you know we come from a family of artistic people I guess you know my grandmother was involved in show business she she was she was acting on stage. She's the one I got my father into acting, and um, and you know my parents are both really creative people. I, I grew up around music yeah. and show business and stuff. But I mean, although my father was not famous when I was a kid, you know, I didn't grow up with a famous dad. He, yeah. it happened much later. But um, so I sort of watched his career evolve from, you know, being an actor who's trying to make it to an actor who had made it, yeah. which is an interesting thing to be a part of. To watch that journey his journey yeah right right and it's inspiring you know it's inspiring and and it lets you know that you never give up on yourself you know just if you have something that you're passionate about you follow it you pursue it and and um there's always going to be ups and downs is sometimes you're going to feel like you need to quit doing what you're doing but if you're if you really work at your craft eventually um something will come from it so it kind of let me know that all those things yeah yeah and one final question, because we're almost out of time. Okay. If you had your choice, your absolute plum choice of any character you could play, not Lando, he's taken, uh-huh. any other character you <laughs> could play, <laughs> who would you pick? I would not want to play Lando in a million years. <laughs> People hit me up about that. They're like, why didn't you play Lando? You, you know, it's like, well, because well, I'm not an actor, for one, but I don't think I would have made it past the audition. I would have came in there and read a few lines. They're like, okay, Corey, thank you very much. Next. <laughs> Um, I don't know, you know, that's... My favorite character, though, is Lord Vader, for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, um, he's a villain, you know, and just I, just... I just liked his presence, the way he just would walk into a room and, and everything would change. In the scene would just change, you know. I think they should do a movie, you know. I know the series is more or less about Anakin, but... In the beginning, but I would like to see a, a, a lot more... Vader. Vader, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. And plus, plus, he didn't he didn't bump your dad off when he raised his voice, so that's got to be right. a bonus. <laughs> well, he got points for that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank right. you so much for your time. You're welcome. Everybody, big hand for Corey D. Williams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and um, thank you for inviting me to London. I'm having a great time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, If you did, don't forget to subscribe. You can push the button in the middle there. And there's a couple of other videos you can have a watch of as well. But please subscribe. It really helps.